Jeff Katz, News Radio WRVA. It is Wednesday afternoon. It's a beautiful day at the moment. Just going to give you the heads up. We're allegedly going to see some uh, some rain and some heavy storms passing through. We'll keep you updated on all of that. I learned about that early this morning listening to my friend John Reed. Here I was, blissfully unaware. Uh, there was terrible weather coming, but John, it was uh, something of a weather geek. He loves weather. Uh, alerted me to that. So I will alert you if and when I see any of this stuff passing through. Now, there have been any number of terrible actions coming out of this White House. You know that, and I know that. But there are things happening with the support groups, and they're going to directly impact Virginia. Now, we have always been able to attract businesses, We've been able to bring high-quality workers to the Commonwealth because we've always had a right to work in Virginia. Well, it seems as if a lot of folks are standing up against that, and now the largest labor organization in America, AFL-CIO, has come out in favor of right-to-work protections. Well, that sounds great, and it sounds a little odd, And that's where we've got to reach out to our friend Mark Mix, who is the president of the National Right to Work Committee. Mark, number one, I appreciate you taking time to be with us again. Well, Jeff, it's good to be on with you. And your eyewitness news report or weather report from the north says it's still clear up here, too. So I'm looking to the west and see a blue sky. So there's your eyewitness (laughs) weather from uh, just north of Richmond. Ah, I love it. I love it. All right. So so did I read this wrong when it says the AFL-CIO all of a sudden is in favor of right to work protections? You didn't, and this is a this is a great story by Sean Higgins that was released through Inside Sources. He he's been following this story, and it's gotten to be more public now because of of releases and things that have happened. But here's what the the AFL CIO is demanding um, in Mexico, and Jeff. Pay attention now, because it says the AFL-CIO wants workers must be able to withhold their union dues, which is a right-to-work law, and the company must stop forwarding them to the existing unions. Um, And that's that's something that the American labor law supports, that an employer must forward these dues. So if in the United States, if you withhold your money, you don't pay your union dues, you lose your job. And if the employer doesn't forward the money to the union, then they get an unfair labor practice charge, and they're, they're uh, adjudicated as a labor law violator. But the AFL-CIO wants these protections for workers in Mexico, and they want the workers to have a right to free association in Mexico. But in, in the United States, they are all in for the repeal of every right to work law in the country, including, to your point, the Commonwealth's right to work law that's been in place since 1947, um, where workers have had the choice whether or not to financially support a labor union. The AFL-CIO doesn't want that here, but they want it in Mexico. Wow. Okay. I, I'm i floored <laughs> by this, Mark. I, I, I mean, if, if it makes sense in Mexico, it would make sense in the United States. It would certainly make sense in Virginia. So, so, so what is the AFL-CIO getting at? Why do they want this in Mexico, and why are they involved in Mexican labor law at all? Well, that's a great question, and the reason being is because down there, they believe that these unions are what they call corrupt and protection unions, and therefore, they're demanding these this free association for workers. But yet, once again, Jeff, they look past the fact that the one of the biggest unions in the country, affiliated with the AFL-CIO, the UAW, the United Auto Workers, is now under federal oversight for being, quote, a protection union for Fiat Chrysler when they were, when their negotiators were taking bribes and kickbacks from the company to basically stand down at the bargaining table on behalf of their rank-and-file workers. So if those workers stop withholding their dues, they get fired in the United States. But because these alleged unions in Mexico are corrupt and protection unions, then we've got to provide free association for workers there. And what they're targeting is a particular company that is providing parts down there. It's a, it's a United States company that has a facility in Mexico. They're creating automotive parts down there. And what the union wants under the, the new United States-Mexico-Canada trade agreement, they want them to be able to stop them from sending anything in here because they are they are not allowing their workers to withhold their union dues, and the company is still forwarding union dues to the existing union there. That's the what? argument. Yeah, I, you, you're right. It's a man bites dog story, Jeff. Oh, my gosh. Now, 
Okay, I'm going to I'm I'm going to bite one more time because I guess I'm a glutton for punishment, but I do love hearing Mark Mix who's the president of the National Right to Work Committee try to explain this stuff. Okay. So, riddle me this, Batman. Was anybody from the AFL-CIO able to say all of this with a straight face? Absolutely. You know, the hypocrisy <laughs> meter in politics, you know, whether it be Richmond or Washington DC is pegged and bent and will never return to middle or normal or anything that you and I would, would believe to be, you know, you should be ashamed of saying this. I mean, yes. you should actually be ashamed of saying it. And, you know, it's not, it, this is not the first time, Jeff, back when we were fighting over a so-called card check bill, this was the bill that the Obama administration was pushing to end the secret ballot election for union certification. You had 82 members of Congress send a letter saying that they demanded secret ballot elections in Mexico, while at the same time they were sponsoring a bill to outlaw the secret ballot union election here in the United States. I mean, so, they, you know, if they were embarrassed then, then I guess they've gotten over it because it, it's just amazing how they're trying to use, you know, this labor policy and this trade agreement that they that they opposed in the first place. Um, they're, they're trying to, to use it now to give what they call, you know, workers, they need to have workers in Mexico who are denied the right of free association, the right to associate. But yet here in the United States, you can be forced to associate with a union as a condition of your employment. It's, it's a poll. God, it's appalling. I mean, what do we take from this? Number one, as you say, uh, the hypocrisy meter is pegged. Number two, I'll tell you one of the things I learned here. I'm not playing poker with any of these guys because because <laughs> if you have the ability to lie like that, man, forget about it. I just, oh, goodness. Yeah, there, there are no tells in this business. There no. are no tells, Jeff. <laughs> you know, one thing that we can do in people in Virginia, and I'm a Virginian, my family's Virginians, all my kids are working here in Virginia, the ones that are out on their own. But what we have to do is pay attention to what Tim Kaine and Mark Warner are doing. Yeah. Tim Kaine is a sponsor of a bill that will repeal Virginia's right to work law. He's a sponsor of a bill that will extend secret, you know, card check unionization over secret ballot elections. He's a co-sponsor of a bill that will allow the federal government to impose contracts on private businesses. Mark Warner, to his credit, has got some concerns with the bill and is yet to co-sponsor it, even though he has taken serious pressure from the unions, both here in Virginia and nationally. So we've got to continue to convince them that Americans and Virginians deserve a choice when it comes to the workplace, when it comes to forced unionization and protect Virginia's right to work law. Mark, I'm going to ask you to do something. Last time you were here, you and I were uh, talking about our backgrounds, and I am without question not anti-union. I have been the me a member of a union. I've held leadership <clears throat> roles in, in other unions way back when, when I was a, a, a police officer. I, I, I also absolutely support the idea that somebody ought to be able to trade their skill, their talent, their effort uh, for an acceptable wage and, and all the rest of it. So, I mean, I'm all in favor of National Right to Work Committee's actions. And you yourself, you don't come from a union-busting <laughs> anti-union household, do you? No, in fact, uh, thanks for remembering that, Jeff. My, my stepfather was a 32-year member of the International Association of Machinists. He was a welder at a manufacturing plant in western New York. And my mom washed dishes in a school cafeteria. She was a union member with the Civil Service Employees Association in New York State. My brother, um, even though when I was younger, he was, he was young like me, but now he's a teacher in the New York State school system. And it wasn't until 2018 when our National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation won a Supreme Court case that he was able to go into the classroom without being forced to pay union dues or fees to keep his job. So, you know, it, it is really an exciting time and, and it's an exciting time to be thinking about this kind of workplace freedom. And yet, you know, they talk about, they want to frame this and that we're against we're against force. We're against unions and against workers, and that's just not true. Nothing could be more pro worker than right to work. Yeah. Hey, for folks who are listening to this, then yeah, it sounds pretty interesting, but I don't know how it impacts me, or do I want to be involved, or what have you. What's the best way for them to learn a little bit more about uh, National Right to Work Committee? Yeah, Jeff, they can find us. There's two different places. One, if they want to know what their rights are and their legal rights, they can go to our foundation, the National Right to Work Foundation, which would be nrtw.org, nrtw.org. That's where you can talk with a lawyer about your rights and ask questions about your workplace rights when it vis-a-vis -vis unionization. And then if you want to follow legislation, both in the United States Capitol here in Washington and then down in Richmond and across the country, you can go to nrtwc. That's the Right to Work Committee's website, nrtwc.org, and find out information about what's happening legislatively in your state and particularly in Virginia as we move into the election cycle come November here. Yeah. Right, listen, Mark, I appreciate you making time. I hope you won't mind with it. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you again as we get closer to the election for sure. And uh, would love to have you back. 
Love to do it. And and we're now partly cloudy up here, Jeff, just to finish up on my <laughs> eyewitness weather report. Okay? Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. That is Mark Mix. He is the uh, president of the National Right to Work Committee and uh, I guess an associate member of the International Brotherhood of uh, uh, Weather Forecasters. Good, good guy 